Hi, um, my name is Grace Scrappy Pillard, and I'm inviting you into my studio uh, during this period of which I call the period of isolation. Uh, I work in a large brick building, which was formerly a bank and was once a synagogue, uh, which is interesting for me. And since my background is involved with uh, the Holocaust and many members of my family were killed in the Holocaust. So to be painting in a place like this is quite, uh, I don't know, strange in a way. Uh, I'm walking around trying to show you just an overview of my studio area, my wall. I have was in a show in Nashville, Tennessee and this was the announcement on the card. And I have two styles. I work portraits, uh, large paintings of people, usually people over the years who either I know or they attract me and I just will run over to them and say, hey, I'd love to paint you. I'm sorry to say that my studio right now is wrapped up with paintings, but you kind of get a sense of they've all been wrapped in bubble wrap and you might get a sense of the scale of the works. Some of them are eight feet tall, some uh, are much taller than that. This is Candace McDuffie who came to my show in New York last fall and uh, of course I took one look at her and wanted to paint her. I loved all the different textures, I loved her glasses and she she's really a very striking looking person. Uh, if I come up close you can get a sense. This is my painting and um, those are her glasses, her nose rings, her wonderful hair, uh, her pearl necklace. I don't know if they're really pearls. And then her beautiful uh, jacket. Candace is a journalist. She's a writer. She writes for Rolling Stone, she writes about hip-hop, and she writes for uh, uh, the Christian Science Monitor, among other papers and magazines, and is comes from and works out of uh, Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, she's my first painting that I did. I did it in February, and it ended up being through March, so during my, what I call my isolation period, she kept me company. Uh, the most recent one was of me. I decided I'm walking around and I'm seeing all these people with no masks. So this is a piece I just did of myself, a self-portrait. A friend made me this mask and it's called Wear One. And this one is four feet by three feet. I'm walking around. I have uh, the painting of, I hope you can see this, I just can't unwrap it, painting of my friend Carl Hazelwood, who's, oh, I've painted about more than any other person, five or six times. And there's Carl. It's a very big painting. It's about seven and a half feet by six feet. He's a wonderful painter, wonderful photographer. And uh, I've painted him since he's a young man. Oh, through the years, my first painting of him was in 1983. Uh, this is a piece, sorry, I'm apologizing for all the bubble wrap, but it's helpful. I think you can get a sense. Uh, if you've heard of the Gorilla Girls, they were really important in the feminist movement. They're still important. They're important to me, and I happen to know one of the Gorilla Girls, and so I painted her with her mask which is the mask of a gorilla, but they spell it uh, like gorilla, G-U-E-R-R-I-L-L-A, uh, more revolutionary. I have all these other pieces. I've shown one at Rush and in, um, with Noah Smalls as well in Philadelphia. And those are my, what I call, oh, they're like jigsaw puzzle paintings. They're broken up forms. Uh, you can see it better in this one. Angola Refugees, the piece that was in the show at the Frist Museum. But I take apart 
journalist images and I just break them apart on the computer. I constantly filter them just like information is filtered and then I just create these patterns of almost broken up forms as if they were burst apart, they were thrown apart uh, by the displacement of their lives. So this is Angolan refugees. I do a lot of work with refugees. I have many more. I've done many drawings. I've done works. Uh, you can see the small little ones, the hanging. I've done a drawing of a friend, a painting of my mother. I've done a large painting of my mother, a painting of my very good friend Judith Salatkin, who is head of solo impression. She, uh, she really kept me company as well during this pandemic, as well as Boris Torres, who's a terrific artist, and I'll try to pull out some of these paintings. More importantly, more of course, because it's the last painting, is Dylan and uh, the Colin Kaepernick uh, t-shirt. He's wearing a mask. I want to just show, yes, terrific guys like Dylan, who I've painted, this is my third painting of Dylan, is wearing a mask as well. I paint, I paint in oil paint, with oil paints. Uh, this is my palette. Those are all my brushes, the cans of brushes. Uh, I mix the paint up. I've got lots of uh, colors that I put out. I really love using colors. The relationship of one color next to another is just critical for me. Uh, you can see the way I paint close up on some of these, as well as uh, just the relationship of colors. So there's a formal element to all of my work. Uh, this is my air conditions going on because we're in the summertime and we're still, as I said, in basically in quarantine. I have other people's work up. I have my small drawing. I have big crates that were sent to me from the first museum when I had my show there. Each painting was actually individually crated. And my new toy, which I really love, is my big ladder, uh, which means that I can get up on my painting wall and get up really high and not feel uneasy when I'm painting. So I've got this great, wonderful ladder. Here's an overview of the studio. Uh, I've done collages, collaged photographs. I've done many, many photographs. It's a collage photograph of me, and it's about whiteness and about Aryan and kind of, it's, it's based on Lenny Riefenstahl, who was Hitler's propagandist, and also I use a Claude Montana dress, uh, a white, kind of a white uh, form, white dresses they wore, and then I always have a running figure, and then I also am a witness. For years I worked in pastels, and there were pastel cutouts, and uh, I had many shows in New York of those pastel cutouts. And I began to do these free forms. Uh, this is a young man, if you can see the sculpture, he's cut out. A young man who's defying gra gravity and with a skateboard thinking that he can do anything, that he's young and that the young are invulnerable. And on the other side, as I move along the sculpture, and on the other side, we have the opposite. We have an older woman, and her face has a hole in it, and this older woman has had, uh, it's just the contrast between youth and old age. Uh, and I, um, I've done a series of these freestanding sculptures as well, and you can see up close. They were cut out, they're pastels, and they've been put on wood, and these pieces, the cutouts, I do have in public art projects at Hoboken 2nd Street Station and in Garfield Station in Jersey City. I'm taking you upstairs to my attic, which has every one 
of, oh my gosh, has so much work. All my drawings, because for 10 years I worked exclusively in pastels. Sorry, it's very dark in here, but maybe you can get a sense of seeing all my rolls of work. Rolls and rolls and rolls of work that I have stored here that uh, are under plastic and are my my wonderful, <laughs> well, I think are wonderful, some of them, drawings of people, uh, people who are not integrated into mainstream society. So my work always has a political and social uh, component to it. There's some more there. And then I have my storage of paintings, uh, some more paintings and easel, and some more work here. Print here that I did called Plates of Light, which I did at the Center for Innovative Printmaking at Rutgers uh, with a grant. And it was uh, a, young, a young man. It's a cutout, which they framed. Sorry for the... I'm just showing you how things are the way they really look. I have this one hanging in one of my rooms upstairs. And so it's, um, it's a homeless person. And there are these canaries in the coal mine. You know, they're the first ones to actually die. They're, they're used as ex for experimentation. And I have candles on this piece and it's called Plates of Light. I don't know if you can see Reggie. I did a drawing of Reggie in pastels. Oh, I did this drawing in, there's a reflection of me here, but I did a drawing of Reggie. He was uh, a lieutenant in the police force in Freehold, New Jersey, when I lived in Freehold. So I usually see someone in a community and I say to them, I'd love to do a piece on you. This one also was framed because it was put in a book and it was shown in New York. Otherwise, I don't frame them. I place them like an installation directly on the wall. This is my office where I work out a lot of my ideas. I work them out on my computer. A, a tremendous amount of ideas on the computer. And this is an image of me from a show I had recently at Moravian College. Uh, and there were three very large paintings of me nude uh, with a blonde wig. It's about blondness in the society again and whiteness. And uh, there I am with front, side, and back in this piece. This is an installation shot from the exhibition and it can give you a sense of how large a lot of these paintings are. Uh, there is a uh, my large abstract series called The Day the World Stood Still, based on 9-11. And then on top, there are my portraits, and you can see people standing there. And it kind of gives you a sense of the scale. In January of last year, I started to do a series of drawings. And the man on the left might be familiar to you. That's Danny Simmons. And I did a drawing of Danny and uh, Beth Robinson next to him there. Those drawings are both, they're, they're 44 inches by 32 inches wide. The most important thing is to just keep painting and to keep doing it. I am now in my 70s. Uh, I do photography as well, but I'm constantly working. I'm inviting you in my studio during this pandemic because this is such a hard time. And uh, well, the period of isolation is easier for me as an artist because I'm able to work all the time. Uh, I've been furloughed from teaching since March, so it's kind of a little more difficult, but it's great because I can pay. Thanks for coming by.